Michael is about to face that fake snow head on. In this scene, he's supposed to trap David in an ice tunnel by knocking loose the support beam. But that single swing sets a second smaller avalanche in motion. This will do exactly what we did last time. Then we're going to drop about a ton of salt. It's all going to go pouring out of there, pouring out of there right near me. Gary, you do it. Okay, okay there's going to be a pop on this. There's going to be a bang. That's the trip. Apple 88, Apple take one. Mark. Speed all around. Ah, but is Hasselhoff really dead, or will this bad guy tunnel his way to more terror? David gave E.T. the inside word, he'll be back. Now he is terrorizing the family, looking for the diamonds, he has a broken leg, it gets a little bit violent, which is quite different for me. I, I'm, it's great being, doing fights and actually losing. <laughs> for a change. <laughs> Avalanche will air sometime this fall on Fox. Meanwhile, Hasselhoff continues to hang out on the beach with his syndicated Baywatch series, and he'll be headlining a new spin-off called Baywatch Nights, coming out in 1995. Take three good-looking hip guys with lots of attitude and some questionable talents, and what do you have? A new summer movie called Airheads, about the guys in the band. Okay, who are you guys? The Lone Rangers? What's wrong with that? As an unsigned rock band who commandeer a radio station to get their record played, Brendan Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler make up the Lone Rangers. But they act more like the Three Stooges. Oh, man, look at the demos wasted! Well, what are we going to do now? Run! E.T. met the boys high atop the roof of their Manhattan hotel for a little sample of their musical prowess. A very little sample. I don't know the word. <laughs> Although his first love is guitar, Adam picked up the sticks for this role. I can do Living After Midnight, Judas Priest, if you want. Say you were an MTV guy. I wanted to just make sure I got in the video. I'd go... Like that. As for Brendan, who had no previous guitar experience, he says he got some tips on how to fake it. We hung out with some, uh, some cool musicians. They showed me three or four chords and gave me every reassurance that I didn't need to know that many to play a really good kick-ass rock song. While all three say the film was fun to work on, Adam says it was his experience in a high school band that really launched his career. We used to play in our basement and kids would come over and hang out. We never get, you guys are good. You guys are all right. Not that good, but you're all right. So that's why I became a comedian. I cut a deal with them. We got to send one person out. I'll go. One of the hostages, Doof. Sorry. <laughs> Airheads will be in theaters nationwide on Friday. What can you learn from the stars? We'll take you to summer school for a quick refresher course next. How do you get the most long distance for the least money? From Plenty of New Yorkers are learning the biz. Show biz classes this summer are a host of famous and familiar faces. With celebrities such as Brooke Shields, Kevin Bacon, and Kirk Douglas at the head of the class, school's in session at the Learning Annex, an adult education center. These one-session seminars are a way to get up close to your favorite star and maybe get some tips on getting ahead in showbiz. I guess I'll start just with a uh, <laughs> brief synopsis of my life. Kevin shared the secret of his success but, with uh, wife Kira Sedgwick just, looking on. With the help of uh, my wife, I came up with this concept of um, riding the wave of uh, other people who are successful. <laughs> I got into a Julia Roberts movie, and I got into a Kevin Costner movie with Oliver Stone directing. Then I got into a Tom Cruise movie, and I said, this is working for me. Brooke didn't lecture, just opened the class to questions. I first became fascinated with you when you did The Blue Lagoon. But playwright Ken Curtis was more than a curious fan. On this night, he had business in mind. I need someone like that to do a part. <laughs> you have to have a That's a good pitch, right? I can give perspective from someone who really has been in the trenches in this business since I was very young. And sometimes just an opinion or, or perspective can help. Staying out of my way because sometimes when I get to exert myself, I use up all the air nearby and blow men faint from suffocation. <laughs> A standing room crowd jammed into town hall to see Kirk Douglas recreate some moments from his films and dispense some showbiz wisdom. 
What is the best advice you can give a young individual with no acting experience who would like to embark upon an acting career? <laughs> First, I'm going to kick your ass. The crowd stayed after class to get an autograph and a handshake from the teacher. It's nice because you have a chance to meet some people personally. We're always being locked up. I actually wanted to see what he's like, but I'm learning an awful lot from him. I think we're here tonight mainly because he's a New Yorker, and that's very inspirational for New York actors and filmmakers. Inspirational to impressionists in the house, too. You're asking me, what, what am I doing? How do I feel? I got a pimple in my dimple, and I'm in pain. <laughs> <laughs> Who is up next at the lecture podium? Actor John Amos and Law and Order's Christopher Noth talk about acting, and model Beverly Johnson shares her beauty secrets. Spartacus. It wasn't until 1977, three years after his resignation, that former President Nixon spoke about Watergate with David Frost. Now, three months after Nixon's death, the Disney Channel airs the interviews once again, along with some never before seen footage. A look at this historic talk with Nixon in tonight's coming attractions. And did you, in a sense, feel that resignation was worse than death? In some ways. In the historic interviews, Nixon fields questions about Watergate, his foreign policy, and the dark days before his resignation. I did not, uh, in the first place, uh, commit a, the crime of obstruction of justice, because I did not have the motive required Beginning tonight, the Nixon interviews with David Frost, 1994 Special Edition, air each Tuesday in August on the Disney Channel. Who is everybody's favorite bigot? The answer is coming up next in today's birthdays. Mother. Mother. Yeah, absolutely. It was just really hot in there. Check out Hotel Malibu. We're saving a room with a view of surf, sand, and bikinis tomorrow on Entertainment Tonight. Production assistance furnished by the GM MasterCard. Only the GM... Celebrating a birthday on this Tuesday, the 2nd of August, Edward Furlong of Terminator 2 fame turns 17. Victoria Jackson celebrates her 35th. Actress Catherine Harold turns 44. Joanna Cassidy is 49. Peter O'Toole checks in at 62. And who played the biggest bigot of them all? Archie Bunker birthday boy Carol O'Connor turns 70. Did you have a favorite, Meathead or uh, Eat It's or... Uh, well, Foxy? I always loved Eat It's. Yeah. Yeah, I really did. But the whole family, it was a great show. I missed that show. Yeah. We're going to roll on out of here with the kickoff of the Rolling Stones' Voodoo Lounge World Tour. Live in performance last night in Washington, D.C., here are the Stones with Live With Me. Enjoy. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Don't you think...